Did you know the beloved ice tower case actually has a case case to surround it and even adds additional cooling? Well, we're about to check it out and you're in for a treat. This is a sick case with many different configurations. I'm gonna show you what the options are. And let me just tell you, the cooling performance is great. And this is coming from a guy who submerged his pie in liquid and put it in his freezer. James over at Esoteric Avenue sent me these Ice Tower Raspberry Pi cooler cases. Yes, this is going to fit into there. This is going to fit into there. And he sent me two versions. One version will hold a 40 by 20 millimeter fan. The other version will hold a 40 by 10. And I'm gonna go ahead and run the fans that he sells it with, which might be a little louder and we'll check out the performance of them. This one, as you see, is a much deeper fan. It's the 40 by 20, and then this one's a shallower fan. If you're new to the scene, there's a lot of extreme cooling cases, and this is by far one of the best options out there. The problem with this one is it's bulk, it's not a case, and it's bulky, and it doesn't, you know, some people like that kind of, you know, open hood look, but some people want to put a hood on it. So that's where these cases come in handy. Not only that, these cases come with an additional fan, so they're gonna cool even better, and they look pretty cool. He has many different solid op color choices as well, well as transparent choices, and he also has two different sizes. The craftsmanship I saw is great. Just talk to him. I imagine he can like do all sorts of different things as far as the build, the construction. There's even a little hard drive bay at the bottom and it includes rubber feet and a lot of little details like getting that micro SD card just to fit just right with that little hole. I have now assembled and disassembled both these cases twice, maybe three times. And let me share with you the basics. Number one, take off the side panel. Number two, always remove your micro SD card. You can lose it. If you slide this out, you can break off your SD card. So that's very important. This case is a lot harder to assemble than this one, just because it's not as maneuverable. But note that the bottom base comes out. This is also a hard drive bay, and you can just slide it right out. It just makes for easier your maneuverability. Um, the other thing is the top slides right back out. So you can just set those aside for now and focus on what's here. Now, once you take out these two screws on both sides, this whole thing's gonna slide out. The both fans, the pie, everything. You definitely wanna do that. I don't think you can assemble this thing otherwise. You're just causing yourself a heartache to remove four easy screws. Okay, once those screws are out, this whole thing could just slide out. And you have to remove this fan in order to get your ice tower into the case. This fan is not going to be mounted to start. If you have the smaller ice tower fan with this fan already on it, you can actually leave that fan on there. It's just a lot more kind of moving around to get it to fit perfectly. Because basically what you're doing is you are sliding the the the, uh, the ice tower up through here to mount these four points on this carriage here. So, and that's mounted by these four screws here. You got one, two, three, and four. Those are provided for the case. They're the ones with the round top. All the other screws in this kit, only the fan screws and these screws are rounded. All the other ones are flat for the case. So that's how you can tell the difference. So I went with a rounded screw, and then you have the actual ice tower bracket, and then you have a riser, a brass riser that came with the ice tower kit. And that's all you do is you screw in the screw and the riser, screw and riser, mount up your ice tower first. Then you get the pie and you mount that up, and then you tighten the pie with these nuts. Try not to over tighten this because you can actually bend the board if it's, you know, just get it ni a nice contact on it. Now I can go ahead and remount the fan. When it comes mounting the fans, just remember the wiring that you want the wires to come out in a way that you can still route them. I like it like this because then I can route it around behind the pie onto the correct spot. And I'm not going to bore you with putting that fan on, you just screw it right on. And then the last thing is wiring. I go ahead and wire all three, I do a red, 
on the first closest to us on the right, and then uh, another red, and then a ground. And then a ground is all the way in the back row, closest to the Supra sign here in the left corner. I'll go ahead and put a diagram as well. And then before you buckle this all up, I recommend just plugging in your Pi without an SD card and clicking it on if you have a switch or whatever, just turn it on. Just make sure these fans do turn on because you're gonna kick yourself later if you button it all up and one of your fans isn't starting up. You have to, that's one of the things with this case is you can't just slide out the Pi that easily. The only th other thing you missed with my two, three, four hours of assembly of these things is when I used the um, the silent fans. Um, and uh, what I did for that, if in case you're wondering, is I put the big fan on the ice tower. I put the little fan here. He he does supply a bracket to to adapt this case to a um, you know a fan of this size while still being able to use the 40 by 20 here. And the only thing I had to do was just get a little creative with the wiring. The 40 by 10 actually comes with a one into two adapter. But what you're gonna find is if you buy two of these, you're gonna have to splice one to go to the different spots on this case or splice them together, something like that. And then I got really creative with this other fan. I went ahead and stripped. I actually didn't wanna ruin the fan, so I kept the fan stock. But the fan comes with all these, all this extra stuff. And uh, I went ahead and took the extension cable, cut that open, and that way I can just go from the extension cable directly to the Raspberry Pi board. And that way I was actually able to use these four plugs to run two of the silent fans. And there you have it. So my orange kit, again, you can get these in all different colors and combinations, but this is the, you know, uh, 40 by 20, 240 by 20 fans. This is the 240 by 10 fans. It's gonna use your stock fan on this side that comes with the Pi, the Pi tower to, to, to start. And then this fan here, they're also LED fans, which is another thing if you guys like RGB, you do get the LED and it looks pretty cool with the transparent case. So instead of boring you with builds, the first setup I tested was his stock, this clear transparent case with four, with two 40 by 10 millimeter fans in it. The second build I did was this or the orange case I have next to it, which is 40 by 20 millimeter fans, two of them, which the fans that he sells with them. The third thing test I did was I bought two $15 aftermarket super quiet fans that are very well regarded. And I put those in there. One is a 40 by 20 and one is a 40 by 10. And then my fourth and final test after I kind of spoiler alert figured out what was the best combo, which was those 40 by 20 fans is I went ahead and took off my, um, I, on my Pi 4 right here, you can see in the beginning of the video, I have heatsink pads. I took off the heatsink pads and removed it with, to thermal paste, and I added some thermal paste. So the fourth configuration is this orange case here with thermal paste instead of thermal pads. So that's the order in which we're gonna go in, and if you're wondering why you're seeing different setups, these are the four setups as I got them uh, configured. All right, we now have both fans working really well. You can't hear a thing. I could feel these fans more than you can hear them. It is ridiculous. Now with the quiet fans, I mean, you could see that there's no gaps there. That thing's still blowing lots of air. So, and then here's the last one, adding the heat sink. Just remember, when I do the test next, I tell you which particular one I'm testing in the beginning. All right, let's run the first tests. We were running around 37 degrees Celsius already, super cool. Here is the fan right in front of the microphone while this is running. That's the fan in the front. That's the ice cooler case fan. Wow, look how fast it's dropping. We got it up to 30, 41, and then back down. To, it's gonna go right back down, look at that. Look how fast it went back down to 37. Run it back to back. Up to 42. We got it to bump up to 43. Let's see how fast it 
Oh my god. It's like, yeah, you thought you were cool, huh? You thought you could blow me up. Yeah, maybe get down to 43. Yeah, it's just gonna it's gonna cool so fast. Within 30 seconds, it's already down. Uh oop. Should be down to 37 in just a second. It's the power of the fan, baby. At 36 degrees to start. Wow, it's just cooling this thing off really fast. Okay, let's warm it up. So we got it up to 39. Let's see how high we can get it again. This is as close to two in a row as we're going to get. While this is running, absolutely zero sound. My computer laptop fan is 10 times louder. This is nothing. Okay, so it's not as good. It's not as good as the two big old 20 millimeter fans. Let's run it back to back. Yes, he's getting a lot hotter. But look how fast it's gonna go down. Not so fast. Takes a little bit of time. Almost the same as the tens. Interesting. I mean, we sell thirty four. Holy shit! So there you go. We weren't even able to break 34 and it is down to 32 degrees Celsius but as you hear it sounds like a jet engine so that's the compromise you get so the moment you all been waiting for the final results and these are in order as I tested them D being the last test but I knew D was going to be the best because I took the previous three builds to realize what was going to be the best setup now there could be some options in between and you do have to factor in the noise those 40 by 20 fans are loud if this thing is going to be right next to you i could see it getting annoying i couldn't have it just because you'd hear it in every single video i ever recorded um however uh, the silent fans did not perform as much, but to be honest, those fans will be plenty good for 99% of all applications with the Raspberry Pi. That being said, if you just want the best of the best, just he go he sells this case with those fans, the option D, you can absolutely go that route. Uh, but option A and option C, you can do that as well. Um, really, the sky is the limit. But as you see, the, all four options are good, but D did eke out just quite a bit further. Um, also note, you could have gone with A with heat sink pace, and I imagine you probably would have saved three or four degrees. Now here it is compared to all my other videos I've made on the Raspberry Pi 4 and cooling it, you know, debate what's the peak numbers base, heat sink, and you might be wondering why I do peak numbers. It's just that's how I've been testing since the beginning, and I feel like it's the only way because it's in the same room, I live in the same climate, I run the same scripts, I'm using a similar Pi, so all those uh, variables are set in case you're wondering. And I think it gives you a general idea of, you know, the differences and what you can expect as far as, you know, 
give or take. It's not exact, but it'll give you a good idea. So I highly recommend these cases. They're awesome. Uh, go check them out. I'll put links in the description to all this. But that's what I think. Let me know y'all think. Let me know if there's something I should have done or anything else. But uh, with that, have a good one, and we'll catch you on the next one.